What's up guys? This is probably the last time you'll be seeing the engine in the RSX because I'm going to be pulling it out. But before I do that, here are some things to do before you do an engine swap. Because we've all seen those GSR swaps that should be faster, but then they get smoked by a single overhead cam. No, not this single overhead cam. Well, here are some of my tips, which I'll be doing today in this video to prevent that situation from happening to you. One of the biggest concerns with buying a used engine is the condition because you don't know what the previous owner did to it and you really don't want to buy a motor that's in bad condition because you're going to waste a lot of money and a lot of time. And in this case, the car has high mileage so I'm not quite sure if I need to hone the cylinders and put new rings in there. The first and easiest thing to do is pull out each of the spark plugs because they can tell you what the condition is on each of the cylinders. You can see there's oil where the threads are, which might mean that the valve cover gasket is leaking oil. Uh, the tip of the spark plug looks dry. It doesn't look too bad at this point. And here's spark plug number two and it looks to have the same condition as spark plug number one. Here's spark plug number three, and it looks to be in the same condition as one and two. Here's spark plug number four, and it looks to be in the same condition as one, two, and three. So curiosity got the best of me. Since I'm already working on the engine, I decided to take off the valve cover to see what's inside. And taking a look at the valve cover gaskets, they are hard and I'm sure it hasn't been replaced since this is a high mileage car. All the heat from all those years have caused this rubber to harden. But the problem earlier with oil on the threads of the spark plugs might have been caused by these O-rings right here because they're not even sealing anymore. The next thing I'm going to check is the timing chain. The Honda moved from a timing belt to a timing chain which should not require maintenance but people have found over time that the timing chain does stretch, so being that I have the valve cover off right now, I'm going to take a look at it to see if it's off a tooth or not. To check the timing chain for stretch, I'm going to need to get cylinder 1 to top dead center, and I've already removed the spark plug right here from cylinder 1, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this long screwdriver into cylinder 1, right there, it's fully in, it's tapping on the piston right now. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to crank the crankshaft over once the screwdriver reaches its peak and before it goes down again, I'm going to stop there and that should be top dead center. And being that this RSX is already wrecked and there's no front bumper, it's much easier to have access to the crankshaft pulley right there. So I'm going to get a socket wrench on that and start turning. I'm going to rotate the crankshaft until the white mark lines up with the mark on the timing cover. And piston number one will also need to be at top dead center, which means that the flathead screwdriver I put in cylinder one will be at its highest peak. And the indicator that the exhaust and intake camshafts are at top dead center will be the two marks that you see on the cam gears. The two marks will face each other in the middle. It looks like the timing chain on this engine is still good because everything lines up after I set it to top dead center. If the chain was bad, then the marks would not align with each other. So that gives me some assurance. For the compression test, I'm pretty fortunate because I bought the whole car and it starts up. So I'm going to warm up the engine, but you can do a compression test with the engine outside of the car, which will be a cold compression test compared to a warm compression test. One thing I forgot to tell you guys, I did not get an exhaust system on this car. I did get the headers and cat, but I have no exhaust system. So it is going to be freaking loud when I start this car up. My neighbors are going to love me today, but I only need to warm this engine up for about five to 10 minutes. So hopefully they can bear with me. Oh, it's damn loud and it's a cold start too. I need to get out of this garage. Time to turn this thing off. All the fumes, they're burning my eyes right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank it five times first, get the reading from there, and then I'm gonna do a max uh, crank to see where it maxes out at on the compression gauge. 
Oh, and also pull out the fuel pump fuse before doing a compression test. And with five cranks, we are looking at around 190 PSI. With 12 cranks, I'm at around 220 PSI. With five cranks, I'm at around 190 PSI. With 12 cranks, I'm at 225 PSI. Okay, with five cranks, I am at 200 PSI. With 12 cranks, I am at around 230 PSI. For cylinder number four, with five cranks, it's at 190 PSI. With 12 cranks, it's at around 237 PSI. So as you guys know, I wasn't able to drive this car because the rear lower control arm over here is messed up. So here's how I'm going to test the shifting in the transmission. I've jacked the car up and I put four jack stands in the front of the car because it's front wheel drive. So now I'm gonna start the car and I'm gonna shift through all the gears. So I have the e-brake up for the rear in case the car wants to lunge forward. The car is raised in the front and I'm gonna start this thing. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Now I'm gonna stop, hit the brakes, now I'm gonna go into reverse. Right there. And that's reverse, so it goes into all the gears. So it looks like everything checked out okay. The shifting went pretty good. I was able to shift through all the gears and with the compression test, all the cylinders looked good too, except that cylinder four was a little high and that might be due to carbon buildup. But seeing these results give me an assurance that the motor is in good condition. So I'm not going to tear the motor apart to hone it and put new rings in there. But what I will be doing is replacing the front crankshaft seal, rear main seal, the valve stem seals, and also the valve cover gasket. And those items should be simple to do once the engine is out of the car. I hope this video was educational. Hit that like button to support my channel. And let me know if you have any questions or comments in below or if you have any recommendations on what myself or other people should do before we swap our engines into another car. I'll see you guys in the next one.